Good afternoon, everyone. This is such a wonderful, wonderful occasion. We're so blessed when we have people who attended a school and they're coming back to say we are still together as alumni of the great 14th Street School. <laughs> and, and the reason I say that is because this is the first job I had when I got out of college and I appreciate all the parents all of the children. Isn't that right, Maurice, my good friend? She and I both started together. And it is so wonderful. Well, we're gonna move on because the sun is hot. They say we can stand sun, but I can't stand it. I don't know what we they talking about. Today, we will have our invocation by Reverend Bernard Adams. Reverend Adams. Just as our teachers in our day started the day after the roll was called, if you can remember, we did have devotion. So let us pray. Eternal God, we are grateful for this day. We thank you, Lord, for how you have brought us across the years through dangers seen and unseen. And as we come today to unveil this marker, Lord, let those who pass this way read it and think about those who came this way. We thank you, Lord, for those who taught us, those who helped us, that we might make this journey through life. Now, Lord, as we unveil this marker today, bless this our community, bless our city. Forgive us of our shortcomings, and, O oh Lord, make us most thankful for all of thy precious gifts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We have so many dignitaries here, I just don't know what to do. Yes. Yes. But the most important dignitaries are the 14th Street alumni. <laughs> and, and the folks who live in the East Ward, and that's why in a minute here, I'm not gonna make my remarks right now. I'm gonna let the councilman from this area come on up and introduce a lot of these people and say what you need to say. <laughs> Well, today is a great day, not just in the East Ward, but for the city of Winston-Salem, as we take time to do what I think is always necessary, and that is to pay homage and memorialize the history of our community, of our city. It's always important not only to remember those who have come before us to memorialize what has taken place, but it's important in who writes the history and who tells the story about what's happened. Because we all understand and know that who writes the story influences what gets told and what gets left out. And I believe that as a community, we have seen parts of our history in many ways that have been memorialized in buildings that are no longer here, but we have people who still carry the stories of what was there and what happened and what took place. And in this 14th Street community and in the 14th Street School, we have people who have left their fingerprints and their marks on this city and this community. And I think that it is important for us not only to take this moment for what we're doing today to put in, 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 into perspective and remember what has happened, but I know there's some work happening for some other stuff to take place in and around this community, Miss Reed, right? There, there's some there's some other stuff going yes, on, some other yes, work, right? Yes, yes, yes. That that's happening in terms of how we think about education in our community, how we think about historically how individuals in this community received an education and how they cared about it, and the people that cared about education in this community. And so I think what we're doing today is important, but it's just one step in the direction of how we remember what is done and then how we move back to a place and how we ensure that our children receive the utmost education in our community. So I am so happy for this moment and this day that has been a long time coming, but it is here today. And as Council Member Burke stated, there are tons of uh, elected officials and former elected officials who are here who have had so much experience with all of you who are here today and are just as excited as I am today. So again, thank you, and this is a great day. It's always important that we say we in everything we do. Sometimes people think they've invented something new. And I tell them, people were thinking before we got here. Elected officials were doing things before we got here. 
And what we do sometimes, take something old and give it a new twist. That's what we do. But it's so important for us to know that it was a group of teachers who taught hard, who loved their children, and worked hard for them to be successful. All these streets here, up and down 14th Street, Cameron, Jackson, Hickory, Dunleaf, Gray, and the teachers and the parents all lived in the same area. And our children, they would come to school feeling good. So you have to have experienced it. How many of the former teachers are here? All right, Maurice and I. But, the, oh, Larry, you taught over here too. That's right. And we love the children. It is so important for us to know this. At this time, our, before I introduce our county commissioner, Dr. Fleming Alamine, I want you to know we do have, uh, is that, is that Bear back there? Is that Mayor Bear? Oh, come on up this way. <laughs> come on up. At this time, Dr. Fleming Alamine will speak with us. Thank you. If there's anybody you need to introduce, please introduce them. If they're on the school board, county commissioner. All right, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Burke. Would all the 14th Street faculty or students please wave your hand? Hey. Yeah. To, to all of you, in behalf of the county commissioners, thank you. To all of you, thank you. You know, for Slash County, it goes back to 1849. But your dedication here in 1922 made a difference in my personal life. My parents came here in 1949 and lived on an old dirt road and now it's called Carver School Road. It was chickens out there then. And it was in a county. And I vividly remember when the county was a separate school system and the city was a separate school system, my class was the last class to graduate before they merged. So I have a big moment of appreciation and a heartfelt graduate gratitude to every teacher and every student who went to this school. Um, I recall that in 1969, a little girl named Cassandra Matthews was going to Atkins. I was chasing her. So I saw this school standing over here several times and passed right by because I walked to her house over in Kingsgate Estate from where I lived on First Street. I was, you know, in love. So I have very fond memories of this experience here. But to those teachers, you know, you impact the history and the future more than you can ever imagine. Every child you touch, you influence. Every smile you make, you change people's lives. Every kind word you give goes into the future in an untold fashion. So we owe you a debt of gratitude, and I'm forever indebted to you. And I know that old Benjamin Forsyth, who this county's name after, in 1849, you know, he was an 1812 war hero, but I hope that he's proud of what we're doing here today because we bring dignity to this county by recognizing 14th Street School. Congratulations. I see uh, some of our school board members back there. Ms. Mott Singer, please raise your hand. Um, who else is back? Let's, let's give her a hand because she's on the school board now, right? She's representing our interests. I see our city manager. I saw him. Yes, yeah, there he is right here. All right. Our city manager, city wants to say hello. See anyone else that I see out there? If I'm omitting anyone, please forgive me. It's not intentional. But just remember this. When they want money from the school system, where do they come? To the county commissioners. Let me say that again. When they want money from the school system, they come to the county commissioners. So hold us accountable. Be there. Be proud of your accomplishments. And for all that you've done for us, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad he recognized the city manager, but the city manager couldn't do his job if he didn't have different departments. So the city county planning department, the department that's worked with us, just wave your hand so we'll know you're here. Thank you. And I do see Ms. Pam Peoples join all of us know us who does a special job with the Winston-Salem Police Department in the human resource the specialists in that area. Wave your hand so they can see you. And we could not be seen and heard if we didn't have a good marketing department. So wave your hand so they can see you. 
they keep us out front where we are seen and we are heard in a very positive way. I believe in protocol. We do have Councilman Larson here. He may want to say something in a few minutes. Some years ago, I went to Dr. Coble, and I said, it's sad when we tear down all these schools. When we tear them down, we tear our history down. And I would suggest that you look at this real serious and put a marker somewhere so people can say, this is where I went to school. And of course, the little marker they put, and then after this committee got real busy and they wanted the historical marker, somebody misunderstood who came up here to see the historical marker thought that little marker that's laying over there was the marker. I say anything that's bad is bad communication. If you don't get an understanding, you can spread some bad news. So today when we do spread this news, it's going to be good news, what it was intended to do and what it is going to be. At this time, we're going to have remarks, and I failed, uh, Congresswoman Fox. Fox. Um, she's here, and we are going to be, let her make a remark, and then the lady who's been working so hard, Kristen McManus, Mrs. McManus, then you will come up. Thank you very much, Councilwoman Burke. I really appreciate being invited, Ms. Reed inviting me to come and be with you all today. I want to say that I agree with the speakers before me. You know, we have a tradition in Congress, so we don't take up a lot of time. We stand up and say, I'd like to associate myself with the remarks made by my colleagues. That saves us from repeating it. So that's what I want to say. I want to associate myself with the remarks made by my colleagues. And, and I think uh, particularly what uh, Council Member Montgomery said, it is important that we understand our history. It's very important that we understand our history, all of our history, and he's absolutely right. Who writes the history makes a difference. And I appreciate being here today. I appreciate your inviting me. I apologize for being a little informally dressed, but I've already been to three fairs and festivals this morning. I got four more to go to this afternoon. So um, Saturdays in September and October are pretty busy in the 5th District. But God bless you all for doing this and Ms. McManus and the other members of the Historical Commission for staying with it and getting an appropriate marker made for the 14th Street School. And thank you again for letting me join you. God bless you all. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Krista McManus, and I am a member of the Forsyth County Historic Resources Commission. And I want to acknowledge that a number of my commission um, members are with me here today. If they want to just kind of wave their hand, they're circulating. And they all have been working hard to make this and a number of events possible, so I want to thank them as well. Um, on behalf of the Commission, I'd like to thank you for being here today, though I don't think we could have kept you all away. Um, and you see a red, you all look very wonderful. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Um, the Historic Marker Program started 15 years ago, and to date we have placed close to 50 markers throughout the city and the county. Historic markers help residents remember and learn about important places, events, and people in the community's collective history. These markers help mark a spot in history that should not be forgotten. Today we are here to learn about the 14th Street School. Since the 1920s, the 14th Street School served an important role in the African American community as a place of, of community and education. Many community leaders and professionals are products of the 14th Street School. Today we would like to invite those of you who know more about this important history to come up one by one and share with us today. We will start with Alfred Harvey, president of the 14th Street School Alumni Association. Once again, thank you for joining us today for this celebration of this history. Okay. Mr. Harvey told me to go ahead. Uh, he used to be a first grader, and his first grade teacher just came in, Barbara Hayes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, Barbara Hayes went on to become one of our 
supervisors for the school system and um, we've been neighbors so long and we're so happy to see you, Barbara. Also, Mayor, he told, I'm gonna let you speak before him. Come on up here, Mayor Bell. Mayor Bell. Mayor Bell. Mayor Bell. Mayor Bell. I'll be, I'll, I'll be very quick. First, first of all, let me say, I am so pleased to be able to be here. I, I know I haven't been able to get to the alumni associations that 14th Street Schools have, but when I heard about this marker, I wanted to make sure that I was here. Like the congressman, I've had two other events in Durham, and that's why I'm dressed like I am. i got to go back. But no matter where I go, across the state, across the country, out of, out of the country, people ask me where I'm from. I say I grew up in Winston-Salem. I went to 14th Street Elementary School. I went to Woodland Elementary School. I went to Atkins High School. I lived up on 14th Street near Cleveland. I walked this route. I had a paper route. All my good things that I've learned came from 14th Street Elementary School. And I, I appreciate it. Appreciate having an opportunity to be here. And God bless all of you. And we're going to keep on keeping on remembering this historic occasion. And I'm proud to be part of it. Part of it. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All you 14 streeters with that red on, please stand up, stand up, stand up. Got some back there in the back too. I just want the people to see you all. We have some special gifts for the teachers that uh, who are here today. So please don't leave before you get those gifts. You can sit down now. I also, uh, I'd like to recognize Judge uh, Burke, Judge Todd Burke. Is, uh, is he here? I think he's, he's back there in the shade. He's, he's in the shade of the... <laughs> cool of the shade. So Judge Burke, we thank you for coming. And as Miss Burke said, I want to give special homage to my first grade teacher. She always does that to me. She knows that. <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, I thought about what I wanted to say today because there was a range of emotions running through me. And uh, last night I was uh, at church, and church lasted a long time. In fact, I didn't leave church until about 1.30 in the morning. And so I drove up 14th Street, and I was the only car on the street, and I stopped. I took a picture of the marker. I got home, and my wife was dead asleep, as usual. She's always asleep. But I woke her up. And I said, you've got to see this. And generally, a lot of times she, she wouldn't wake up, but this time she woke up. And she woke up, and I showed her the picture of the marker. I want to say... As a group, we did it. Yes, we did it. And we still have something to do. We still have some things that we want to accomplish. Because like I said, when you look at this verdant green grass, you look at this site, the memories of this site call for another school on this site. If you remember, the meeting that we had at the old Atkins High School auditorium with the county manager and personnel from the central office. And we talked about fast tracking. How when they talk about building a new Ashley, let's talk about putting a STEM school right here for our kids. And we want a STEM school here because we believe if we can produce mayors, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. we can produce council members, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. commissioners, commissioners yeah. athletes, mm -hmm. teachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because believe it or not, you know, I just retired from Simon Green Atkins High School mm -hmm. on Old Greensboro Road in the School of Technology. So I think I know a little bit about technology. And I believe that our children in this community deserve that. There are a lot of schools throughout the state of North Carolina where they have elementary schools that spy, have a theme of science and math. We need to have that same thing with our kids. Because when you go up to the new Atkins and you look on the wall, you see 
at, at least 50 pitchers, 50 pitchers of members from the old Atkins High School who had doctors, pharmacists, mathematicians. So if that happened back then, just think what can happen right now. If we ignite that spark in our young people to achieve like we achieve, they can do better, they can do more, and we should leave our legacy behind us saying this is what we leave for you. You don't know it, but over there behind that camera is a box. We're going to put, we've, in fact, we've already done it. We've already put keepsakes in that box. Uh, Marva tells me it's going to last for about how many years, you say? 50 years. 50 years. I, don't, I don't know. I hope and pray that I'm here, but I don't think I'll be here for 50 years. In 50 years. But we're going to have a box that's going to be buried, and they're going to open that thing up in 50 years so that people will still know about the goodness of 14th Street Elementary School. They'll still know why we are so proud to wear these school colors of red, white, and blue. While we are so proud to sing our school's alma mater, while we are so proud of all the teachers who gave up their time and their efforts to motivate us to become the citizens that we are today. Because Winston-Salem would not be what it is today without 14th Street. When you consider you had 1,500 kids in an elementary school, that tells you that you had the minds of a lot of young people in the palm of your hand. I'm going to sit down, but I want to sit down before, before I sit down, I want to say one thing. Langston Hughes had a little brief poem that says, hold fast to dreams. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams die, life is like a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is like a barren field frozen with snow. This grass is green. It is not barren. We need to grow. We need to put a school here. And we need a new school. If you're going to put a new Ashley, let it be right here where it should be. Thank you for coming. And God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. I don't really have to introduce her, so I just called her name. Marva Reed, community activist. And I felt we do have our council person, Bessie, is here. Let them know you're here. And anyone else who's come in who's part of the elected officials. Okay. And we're not going to stay out here all night. No, now. we're not. And, and I'm, I'm scripted, so I won't ramble on, okay? All right. <laughs> On behalf of East Northeast Winston Neighborhood Association, we'd like to thank all our distinguished guests and the city of Winston-Salem. We thank you for those that know me, know that I love petitions. And we thank those that signed the petition for this historical marker. After this ceremony, see me because guess what? I've got another petition for you for a worthy cause in East Winston. Right. <laughs> also, after the ceremony, on the side of the store across the street is a mural that depicts our beautifully beloved 14th Street School. Please take a moment and go over and see it, okay? Um, classmates and people of East Winston, this is a time to release that anger the confusion of why our school was demolished. Take that energy and rebuild a better school right. and a better East Winston. Amen. Thank you. It was very good. I hope we can take that and work harder. A few weeks ago, I was at a birthday party for Mr. Griffin. Where did he go? <laughs> Mr. Griffin uh, had his birthday party a few weeks ago, and he turned 82. Yeah, and, and he was one of the students here, 
and one of the famous athletes for this city. And it reminds me, I'm going to say something. Last week, Councilwoman Adams and I, we were at Paisley's uh, 50th class of 1967, celebrating their 50th. We looked at the students who became these men and women in our city. They looked productive, and you could tell that somebody had loved them along the way to encourage them that you can be who you want to be in America. We had parents, we had teachers, we had grandparents, aunts, uncles, and neighbors who would just lift our children to let them know this is your country. Take advantage of the opportunities. And we looked at them, and this is what I told them. Whenever I'm out and I see children that I have taught, sometimes they don't want me to see them. But I don't stop until I find them, and this is what I say. I say, thank you for allowing me to work for you. Thank you for helping me to be who I am today. So we who were teachers, we were not above our children at that particular time. We just embraced them, carried them home with us, loved them, and enjoyed them. And I sent a note to the planner of the activity, and I also cc'd a copy to the superintendent. Her name was on the program, but she was not there. Now, I, and this is what I said to these productive people. It is time for you to step up. Now, Ms. Reed just finished saying she's going to get a petition to start signing again what we ought to be doing. You're capable. You're smart. You're a part of this city. You pay taxes in this city. And the money that's being distributed should be distributed fair and equal. And our children, our children should not be at the bottom of the totem pole. And when these people in this city, in this county, talk about all of us, it's going to have to stop talking about the blacks ought to be over here and the whites can go forward. We are not slow people. We are not lazy people. As I told the city manager the other day, you got two county employees. You got the lazy and the sorry. And the lady told me the lazy just don't work. They work sometimes, but the sorry just don't do nothing at any time. Now, we are not lazy, we are not sorry, we are not shiftless. We are wonderful, proud people. And we are going to have to take the lead. I'm looking at that Graham girl there. When, wave your hand, Graham. Dolores. Uh, I used to work, when I came here, her sister, Clarice, was working at the school I was going to first work at. But I used to look out the window, and I see this girl, and she would be by herself. And she walked like she was a princess. She walked real straight, and she had very long hair, and she had her shoulders the right way, standing, holding them back, looking up. Now, she's just an example of one of the students, but we had many, many more doing the same thing. And it's going to be up to us to step forward, to tell this city and this county we're tired of you pushing us to the back. You hear me, yeah, Congress, yeah, yeah. Congresswoman Fox? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter which party you're in, you're gonna have to step up there yes, sir, and we yeah. in your district yes, and make sure that you include us the right way. <laughs> now, I do have a, do you wanna say anything? All right, he won't say one thing. Come on up here and say one thing. Make sure it's one, one thing. One, the one thing. Looking out over this crowd, a 1924 building's put on this site. Uh, 1,500 students, I guess, have enrolled. Walking down this sidewalk right here, walking back and forth. Walking to what I'd call the portal of progress, because education is, in fact, the door which we all move forward on. But as we sit here in the heat today, Think about there was no air conditioning in 1924. So you guys are enjoying the full historical event that happened here. Very good. Do you want to say anything, Councilman Mabese? I know he does. Now, come on, because he always yeah, going to say something. Yeah, Jim, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this recognizing the history and heritage of our community. Thank you all for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I want you to know when you talk about Reynolds Town, how many of you know the story of Reynolds Town? I thought it was too important for us not to have information about Reynolds Town. We put the historical marker up there not long ago. And the students who live way on Happy Hill 
used to have to walk over here to 14th Street, I mean to uh, Atkins School. Mr. R.J. Reynolds, he designed all these houses up there and had his employees living in them. And then when they said the students were going to go to Atkins, the whites moved out and this became an area for black people. Now, it wasn't easy, but our, your parents worked hard for you to have something. And we ought to be ashamed that we're allowing people to take all our dignity away to put our black children at the back of the line. Yes, now, if y'all sit here today and then y'all go home and y'all get comfortable and think everything's all right, then it's just shame on you for not having any more backbone right, to stand up for right. what you need to stand up for. Now, I'm not going to preach today. I, I'm going to tell you why. But I'm touched today when I saw how children were and where they could go, and then we're coming and going. You don't like East Winston, some of you. You don't live where I live. But I live when that little country street that you were talking about, Dr. Fleming, I mean, Carver. It was the country when I moved out there. And we are proud of where we live. We are proud of East Winston. Don't let other folks make you ashamed of who we are. You know, they, they do a good job of that if you allow them to. They'll make you think you're not anybody. And some of them didn't have the sweat you had when you was growing up. Live worse than what you live. But the thing that got them by was the color of their skin. And that's just it. Now, we're glad you're on our side of town. Come on back over here. Hey, we don't want to hurt your feelings, but we have to tell you the truth. And by the fact that you're here, you know things ought to change and ought to be what they ought to be for All little right. black boys and black girls. All right, All right now. You have anybody who wants to speak about memory sharing. Oh, is that what y'all was, what were y'all talking about? Memory sharing, memory sharing. What is that, Miss McManus? All right, I want to make sure I get it from the mouth of the mind of the person who put it together. All right, you heard her. If you want to say anything that's so pressing about memory, you can come and tell it. But it is getting hot out here, y'all. All right. Come on, say it. Come on. Again, good afternoon. Uh, I'm here representing Evelyn Terry, representative for the 71st District. That's right represents this area and grew up right around the corner on Delabrook Road. Ms. Burke mentioned the historical site down at Reynolds Town. You have one here. There are very few communities where you can go one mile that way and have a historical marker and go one mile that way and have another. Right around the corner was in the county, in the county. But people up and down 14th Street and other parts around walk to the brickyard to, walk, to work on George Black's brickyard. This is important. And like uh, Alfred and Marva said, this is a critical site and it's time to rise up. Thank you for having and letting Evelyn Terry be represented. Have a good day. Uh, thank you, Miss Burke. Out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. For those of you who may not know, there's a poem called Invictus. They made a movie about it, and it was uh, uh, depicting the life of the president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela. Uh, let me uh, say this. I want to thank all the ones who let me share this panel with them. And for those who I served with on the city council, Ms. Burke, thank you for us serving together. You think she speaks out now, you ought to be down at some of the council meetings. Let me also thank for being here, 
Virginia Fox, the Congress lady. We served together down in the state legislature. Her office was around the corner from my office when we were both in the legislature. She's now a congressperson up in Washington, D.C. We appreciate her for coming out here, and I'm sure she heard every word that we said and know what our hearts and our minds are. Uh, we give thanks quite naturally to the teachers that served here. This was my first job. I taught on what they call the fourth floor, the top floor. The seventh and eighth graders, that's when they went to eighth grade, long time ago. Uh, let me also give thanks to those who put this great event together, Mr. Harvey, and also to all those who helped out and those that had anything at all. Nobody can do anything by themselves. We give praise to all these people, but they had a whole lot of help. And those are the ones that sometimes we need to praise. Uh, we see a lot of people that went to school here. Uh, we know that Mr. Griffin back there. We know that there's also the Graham that I mentioned. And also we have uh, Mr. Leroy Cooper, who without him, I wouldn't be here today. So I thank him for helping me out and bringing me here. And everybody else that are here, Jim Shaw, who is a businessman here. But we also thank the teachers. We also thank the students. But some of the people that do not get enough recognition, not that they ask for it, but we ought to give it to them, were the parents. Their parents gave up a whole lot. so that they could be here. And they would be here in the school. They wouldn't send somebody, they'd come to the school. And they would let Mr. Ashley, who was the principal at that time, know that they involved. And Miss Gladden, who was the secretary at that time. And all those teachers, but at the same time it was the parents who had to walk to come to PTA meeting and who had to do a whole lot of sacrificing. So we need to give thanks and appreciation for them. You know, there's two kinds of history. People talk about history. There's history, and there's his story. His story. We want history. We don't want his story. We want to be played in a kind of way. And it's not going to be no school here until we decide there's going to be one. We got to make up our minds, it's gonna be one. We talked the big game, but now it's time for us to act. If we want one, we gotta act. When you leave here today, don't say, yeah, that was a good program, I enjoyed it, they had good work, and then we go back doing the same old thing. If we want one, then we the ones determined to get one. And I thank you all for letting me come and be here. Thank you all for letting me say these words, and thank everybody for whatever part that you played in this grand event. And whether you realize it or not, it's a grand event. And that'll just have to do until the real thing comes along. You know, I can call just about every teacher's name who worked at this school. Larry Stide calling them. You go to that top floor, you had uh, Mr. Wiseman, Jones, Mooney, yeah. Ms. Kaiser, you had Ms. Irma Gaston, Ms. and you had Irma Banks, you had Ms. Hall, you had two Halls, Eleanor Hall and that other Hall. Come on, Barbara. Ms. Bird, and Ms. Graham, oh yes. You had Watts, you had Laurent, Wallace, Wallace. Okay, now we're gonna let, we're gonna let Barbara talk. Hello to all of you. Hello. It's so great to see you. And it makes me so very proud to see so many of the students I taught as first graders many, many years ago. I really don't have that much to say now because it's all been said. But there is one thing that I wanted to stress 
and make known. I'm so thankful that I worked during the time when we had parental support. That's the key to everything that goes on in our schools. And we had, as someone mentioned, parents were walking night, day, whenever we had something going on here to support us. They supported us as teachers, and I appreciated that. But the big thing was they did everything possible to push their children on in spite of their circumstances. And many of them made many outstanding accomplishments. So to the parents who are here, I say thank you. I think uh, several have said thank you to teachers, to, uh, and the custodial staff, don't ever forget them. Don't forget them. But for everybody who was involved, thank you so much for making my many years at 14th Street School wonderful years, the best years of my life. I started here and uh, almost ended my career here. But uh, thank you and thanks for all of the community support. But parents, you're the key. You are the key. So keep that in mind, regardless of where your children go. Thank you so much. It's wonderful seeing you. I wish you the very best. We, we appreciate that, Barbara. When, when we were talking, I thought about Mr. Cook. That, where is Sylvia? Where is Sylvia Nichols? Sylvia Nichols, family people, their home is still right down there, the family home where her mother lived and her mother's brother. And when I met Sylvia, she was either four or five years old. She walked across the street to my classroom because Beverly, her cousin, was in my room. When Sylvia walked in, she said, hello, Miss Berg. I said, hello, little girl. And the little girl uh, said, I'm Sylvia. I said, I know you are. She said, may I dust for you? I said, oh, such a smart little girl. Then she said, may I water the flowers for you? I said, see, children, how smart she is. And Beverly couldn't wait to get her home to tell her. <laughs> but now Sylvia is my neighbor of the home that she grew up in next to me on Cumberland Road. Sylvia and her husband have moved back into that home, but they still have their family home down here. And Sylvia, I'm so glad you and your husband are my neighbors. Because when I holler, you'll know to come. <laughs> we also have Mr. Younger who works on our planning board. Would you let him know you're here? And we had our police, uh, Captain Weaver, I saw somewhere here earlier. There he is back there. That new public safety center over in the southeast ward. How many of you seen that on Walltown, that new public safety? See, we step it up, don't we, council people? We want the best. Now, the first building that we put over here, the uh, insurance building, North Carolina, Winston Mutual. And then North Carolina Mutual got tied in in some kind of way. That's where we have things going. And then we have that public safety center over there in Walltown. So he represents that with his staff. Now I've been told by Ms. McManus it is time for us to do the last part.